Hi all, welcome to Grips Read Documents webinar. We are pleased to announce the V5.2 release and today I will be covering the key highlights of this release. My name is Shilpa Sharma. I am product manager for Grips Read Documents. If you have any queries regarding the new features coming up, please email me on this address. Before moving on with the details, let me cover the key highlights I will be covering in today's webinar. Uh, in GCPDF, we have added new API that will help you delete or replace text in PDF documents. In GC Excel, you will now be able to create Excel forms. We have introduced new API that will help you add Excel form controls uh, to spreadsheets. In GC Excel templates, you will now be able to perform automatic worksheet pagination. We have introduced a new property. Uh, in uh, GC Word report templates, you will now be able to specify a uh, specific culture to specific data source when you are adding the data sources to the template. Uh, we have introduced new API to add shadows on shapes and text uh, in Word files. Uh, also, we have introduced a new sample uh, with full source code that will help you convert markdown.md files to Word docx files. In GC Imaging, we have added new WebP format support. So you can load and image, uh, save images in WebP format. And we have also introduced new GC Imaging.skia library for enhanced drawing performance and quality, basically for text and graphics. And we have also introduced a new control, uh, Grips Read Documents Image Viewer. It's a JavaScript based image viewer and editor, and this will be a beta release. I will cover more details in the upcoming slides. So starting with the GCPDF new features, uh, we have added the ability to delete and replace text from PDF documents. Uh, in GCPDF, we have been supporting searching text using uh, common search options like whole case word or case sensitivity or uh, regular expressions. Uh, when you find text with these uh, parameters, uh, you can now delete and uh, replace uh, that text from the document. So itextmap.delete text and itextmap.replace text, these are two new methods that have been introduced. And the parameter, the text that you search, uh, that whole uh, find text parameter class object, you can pass into this these methods. And uh, we have also introduced delete text mode enum. It provides you two options. One is the standard option. In standard option, if you delete the text, uh, the text next to it would replace that position of the deleted text. While in preserve space, uh, it uh, would only delete that text. Uh, the next word uh, will not replace the position of the deleted text. Uh, so uh, these options uh, will allow users uh, to remove or replace text, uh, the found text inst instances in the document. Uh, and this will work for uh, right to left languages or uh, vertical text. Uh, when you replace the text, the new text can have the same or different font uh, size also or different font. So in this example, a uh, word uh, wetlands is uh, searched in a PDF document and uh, then that uh, parameter is passed to delete text method with delete text mode dot standard option. Uh, so when uh, this document is saved, the text is deleted from the document and the text next to the word is shifted to its position. So this is our online sample browser and you can find the new samples uh, within the modifier tag. Uh, so in this sample, uh, the name uh, is replaced by a different name. We can also replace simple text like phone number or email ID with a separate with a different uh, uh, value. Uh, so in this document, uh, the document is loaded into GC docu GCPDF document and uh, the document calls the replace text method uh, where you can find this uh, uh, name uh, and replace uh, it with a different value. Uh, and if you see this name has been replaced in the final document and it's here. Moving on with new features in GC Excel. In this uh, release, we have added the ability to add form controls to your spreadsheets. Uh, GC Excel adds the I control collection, uh, which adds all generic members of form controls of type I control. These are all the controls that are supported. As you see on the right side, all these controls have been added to the spreadsheet using GC Excel API. Uh, uh, some of these controls also have a linked cell uh, property associated 
uh, with which you can uh, bind any value to uh, these controls and uh, vice versa so if you want to retrieve value of any of the controls you can ret retrieve it using the linked cell so each of these controls has its own set of properties uh, uh, you can set those using the specific API of each control uh, you can modify these form controls uh, and uh, the values uh, you can also uh, use these form controls as shapes. So advantage is that then you can use the shape properties on the form controls. Uh, so you can duplicate a control uh, shape or you can copy the shapes on the cells. Uh, and uh, uh, basically you can use these form controls with Excel input output, JSON input output and also export spreadsheets having form controls to PDF. Uh, so these uh, uh, form controls will be exported as images and you can also export these spreadsheets to HTML and images. So this is our online sample browser of GC Excel where you can find various samples related to the new form controls API. Uh, you can see specific samples uh, for uh, the each of the controls uh, where we have uh, shown uh, the specific properties with respect to that control that can be set using the new API. Um, basically you add the controls to the worksheet dot for uh, worksheet dot controls collection and then call the specific uh, method of adding that control and the location and the associated properties can be set for that control as i showed in the ppt uh, we have generated this feedback form a use case uh, using gc excel api so basically in this sample you set up all the text uh, which you need to display uh, at specific range locations and define it um, also set up the range uh, with the values which you need to fill in the form controls uh, and later you uh, just uh, set up the style to be used in the worksheet and associated properties and then you start adding the controls so here you see we added a group box this is a whole group box and option buttons within these group box so you add you call the add group box method of worksheet.controls collection uh, set it to some location and you add various option buttons at uh, the specific locations and also associate the linked cell property for this option button uh, and set it to any of the cells so here we set it to a8 so if your user wants to retrieve value of any option button which one has been chosen uh, he can just retrieve the value of a8 uh, so that's how we have set uh, multiple group boxes and option buttons over here as we move down you see that uh, we have also added check boxes uh, so you just call the add checkbox uh, method uh, and uh, you set the associated uh, text with the checkbox. So you add several checkboxes at specific locations and set the text property of checkbox control. Um, as you move down, we have also included the spinner controls. So you call the add spinner method. You can set the max and min values and the small change, which we, which uh, 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 when we click uh, the button, uh, the numeric value increases by one. Uh, and you also set the linked cell uh, properties. So in case you need to retrieve the value, so we set it to B23. You retrieve the value of B23 cell. Uh, and the current value which this spinner is set to and similarly we add the other spinner controls uh, set more option buttons and uh, if you move further down uh, we have added the drop down control and then even the drop down control also has uh, associated properties so uh, the number of items uh, associated with the drop down control they are set in drop down lines property uh, you bind it with a specific range which holds the options for these drop down uh, for this drop down control so as you see at the top uh, we have set i28 to i30 range uh, with these values so these are the uh, various options that will be displayed within the drop down button uh, and uh, if you move uh, beyond the drop down button we have also added a scroll bar control with all the associated properties and so on and so forth uh, so this is how the feedback form looks like and now you can use this form uh, and collect uh, data from users
Another interesting feature which we have added to GC Excel templates is paginated template. Uh, if you have an invoice like this, where you have certain data from a company, uh, you need to group it by company and you want that in one particular worksheet only 10 number of rows should be displayed while the data should continue on the other worksheet with the same layout being repeated. So you can now use two new properties to set fixed number of rows in your layout. Uh, first is template options dot pagination mode. Uh, this is a global boolean property which if set to true you can uh, define the report based on fixed number of lines per page and another property is count per page which you define uh, within uh, the template tag so you can set cp equal to 10 uh, if you want to display only 10 number of rows on a particular worksheet and the worksheet would automatically paginate after the 10th row into a new new worksheet so in this output here, you see that 10 number of rows from a particular company has been displayed uh, in the first worksheet while the data continues on the other uh, worksheet with the same layout being displayed uh, and uh, uh, because uh, only five products are there in the other worksheet the rest of the rows have been left blank because in the layout we need 10 number of rows only uh, and similarly when uh, there is another company uh, the same uh, kind of grouping uh, would apply where only 10 number of rows uh, would be displayed uh, while the other while the data would continue on the other worksheet moving on to new features in gc word uh, we have added the ability to add specific culture to specific data source. Uh, as you know that we can add multiple data sources to data template. So this add method now accepts the new culture parameter. Uh, previously, uh, uh, whatever number of data sources you add to data template, all of them followed a single culture. So all the data will be displayed in a, in a particular default culture with, with whatever is used on the system. Now you can set specific culture to a specific data source as you see here we have certain data which we bind with the data template uh, this data will now be parsed as per the culture set for that data source so if you add a data source uh, uh, and uh, you specify a culture as us so that data will be displayed uh, with the us currency format um, as you see we have defined uh, uh, the format to be currency here uh, so it automatically passed this data and uh, displayed in us culture while on the other hand the uh, the other data source this has been defined with the japanese uh, culture so the data has been passed accordingly with the, the jp culture and displayed uh, in jp currency format in this release we also add the support of uh, adding shadow effect on shapes and text we have added new property effects uh, to these classes uh, so you can add shadow effect to uh, uh, the, these classes and uh, the text effects class this is a new class it will help you to apply effects to the font class and it only supports the outer shadow uh, shadow type uh, as you see here on this text we have set the outer shadow shadow type uh, and uh, there is also a shape effects class uh, it's based on text effects class but it also supports additional shadow types like inner shadow and shadow preset uh, this you can add to the shapes um, and in addition you can also uh, add some inbuilt shadow types uh, using built-in shadow id enum on both text and shapes shape over here you see it applies inbuilt shadow type uh, using built-in uh, shadow id enum this is online sample browser of GC Word where you can have a look on the demo sample that applies shadow effect on text and uh, shape. Uh, this is what we are going to achieve. Uh, so we define a style uh, of type uh, paragraph style uh, and uh, the font part of that style in that we set the effect as shadow uh, and we then we defined uh, outer shadow class uh, and set it to this uh, shadow option for the style and uh, then we set various properties related to that uh, shadow object um, and uh, then we add the text to the paragraph of the body and uh, the style associated with it so that's how it uh, looks like uh, and uh, if you have a shape like this then also you can apply a shadow effect in this shape we have applied 
built in uh, shadow uh, enum uh, option uh, set to prospective lower left and this is how it it looks like in this release we have also added a sample implementation that converts uh, markdown.md files to word doc docx files uh, we have provided the full source code uh, which uh, implements this whole sample it uses third party marktick uh, processor which uh, parses the .md files so this is our online sample browser for gc word where the full source code for converting uh, markdown file to .x file uh, sample is available in this sample basically uh, the word render class uh, this class actually uses the marktick package um, which is a third party package uh, to parse the markdown file and then uh, the, the gc word om uses it to create uh, word documents so if you run this sample uh, this will be the word file that will be generated and it has been converted from the md version um, i'll now cover the new features we have added to gc imaging uh, we have added the support for webp format it's an image format that's in general intended to replace uh, JPEG and PNG formats. Uh, it supports both lossy and lossless compression. And uh, in general, uh, uh, it, it provides high quality rendering without affecting the website performance. Uh, it's one of the reasons why developers are moving on to using images in WebP format. Uh, and uh, that's also the reason why we, we thought of uh, uh, including this format in our list of supported image formats. Uh, the GC bitmap class now supports loading and saving images in WebP format and the class now also supports this method save as WebP. It will help to save an image to WebP format and it takes a number of parameters. Uh, it will take the stream or part to save the image to and the clip rect uh, dimensions, the clipping rectangle of the image to be saved. Uh, whether to save the image, image as lossless or with lossy WebP uh, format. Um, the compression quality for the image so we can give a range from between 0 to 100 a number between 0 to 100 range and uh, the method uh, of encoding to use uh, which is uh, the defining the quality and speed of uh, rendering the image uh, we can provide number between 0 to 6 uh, in this code it, the uh, image uh, in webp format is loaded into gc bitmap class and saved as png uh, and in this code uh, an, an image in png format is being loaded into bitmap class and saved as webp with the parameters in this release we also introduce a new package uh, grape city documents imaging skia it's based on uh, the 2D open source uh, library Skia, which uh, provides common APIs to render text and graphics across uh, hardware and software platforms. So in GC Imaging, this new package is a new rendering engine and it will help to draw text and graphics with a faster performance and enhanced uh, quality. Uh, so if you are looking for a cross-platform solution to render complex text and images, this is the package you can go for and it is available within GC Imaging. It has three main classes, GC Skia Bitmap, GC Skia Image, and GC Skia Graphics. Basically, the way to code with these classes is similar to how you code with their counterparts in GC Imaging. Uh, you can use this library, as I mentioned, for rendering uh, large and complex images, uh, for rendering text with uh, best possible fidelity, and with additional features like font hinting or subpixel rendering. Uh, and also if you don't need access to individual pixels dpi other than 96 or you know additional features like xf icc or effects etc you know you you, you just need to render uh, images and text but the complexity of uh, the image or text is more uh, then you can go for this library as you see over here this is a complex text right to left uh, and it involves uh, complex font support as well and notice that uh, GC Skia bitmap renders the text with uh, higher precision as compared to other tools. So in our online sample browser of GC Imaging, we now include uh, images saved with the new Skia library. You can have a look on the new samples we have implemented uh, demonstrating the usage of GC Imaging.Skia library. Uh, and you can uh, see how the new classes can be used to render text and graphics. 
uh, two new samples have been added. One is uh, rendering text uh, via gcimaging.skia. The other is rendering graphics uh, using the anti-aliasing effect uh, in gcimaging.skia. In this release, we also introduce a new JavaScript control, Grape City Documents Image Viewer. This is a beta release. So uh, these days, websites are being made compatible to be run on any platform which have browser. Uh, and uh, this is one of the reasons why organizations are shifting to deploy JavaScript based applications because you do not have to code specific to any platform. You just need to code in general and it will run on any platform. Uh, also, internet is filled with images these days. Uh, there's a need to post images, uh, edit them, filter them and then upload them. Uh, there are uh, several apps these days which help you in editing the images but they need to be downloaded on your desktop or you need to you know rely on uh, image editing apps like Flickr or Picasa. But if there's a solution which can help you work with images online and save it on the client side itself, it will be more faster solution for you. So Grape City Documents Image Viewer or GC Image Viewer is intended uh, to uh, help you load, edit and save images uh, on the client side. Uh, you can draw an image through a client side API part of the image viewer. Uh, the supported formats are JPEG, PNG, BMP, GIF, TIFF, ICO, SVG and WebP. You can zoom on an image, rotate the image. You, uh, also, we support the ability to add plugins to the image viewer so that it extends the functionality uh, and you can add more features to your image viewer. Uh, this image viewer has a responsive UI and uh, it has a detailed client side API that can help you work with images. Uh, and you can download the edited image on the client side. So this is our online sample browser for GC image viewer. You can have a look on the general info about the viewer here. Uh, we have also implemented feature specific samples. If you want to have a look on uh, how a particular feature can be applied from code behind or how it works in the UI, you can have a look on the sample. For example, uh, you can zoom in or zoom out image through the default options available in the UI of the viewer. And if you want to set uh, zoom options in code behind, uh, you can have a look on this code. So these are the various properties supported with respect to uh, zooming an image. Um, and uh, for example, uh, uh, drop down zoom factor values, this property can be set to provide list of zoom options that are uh, displayed in the zoom drop down over here. So whatever list you provide uh, will be reflected over here. Uh, and uh, in addition, uh, we also include uh, samples uh, for uh, various image formats that are supported in the viewer. Edition viewer also supports adding uh, plugins uh, to the viewer uh, with which you can extend the viewer functionality. So we provide the rotation plugin uh, with the package of the viewer. You can find it uh, within, within this folder. Uh, you set the script to this file and uh, then you add that plugin to the viewer uh, and uh, you can uh, make use of the functionality uh, provided within the plugin with respect to rotation and uh, this plugin would be available as a as an icon on the default ui options of the viewer you can rotate the image from here also add a custom plugin to the viewer uh, you can create your own uh, plugin uh, where you can uh, implement functionality like uh, for example when your viewer opens uh, you want to display a message box so you can define uh, that uh, code uh, in a sample plugin or a custom plugin and include it in your project uh, and you can call that plugin uh, from this uh, js file and you can have a look on the, the sample in detail uh, we also support the ability to add a plugin uh, from an external library so here we have used an external library that applies uh, image filters uh, on the images uh, you can have a look on this sample implementation and we also include some reference samples that demonstrate how you can uh, use the image viewer in various other frameworks like javascript angular react and Vue. 
and with this we come to the end of this webinar hope you enjoyed the new features part of this release to view full release details do have a look on these blog links and share your feedback at this address thank you